Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video. Today we are talking about frequency, also known as helping speed, so that's this statistic here, as well as energy and how that ties in with berry farming and increasing the strength of Snorlax. So all of those actually come together to give you a final outcome on Snorlax, a strength increase on Snorlax. But there's a lot of intricacies in terms of how these numbers come together. And we finally have a community that actually um, looked into this, did some data collection. And some of you know, might know by now that the energy of the Pokemon, and that's this here, actually affects how quickly it farms. But then what is the meaning of frequency? A lot of you might have noticed that a Pokemon that has a frequency of one hour doesn't actually give you one ingredient or one lot of ingredient or one lot of berry per that frequency. In fact, quite a lot of times it's much faster than that. Maybe you'll, you'll see a berry drop every 10, 20 minutes. So what's going on there? So thank you to the Japanese community that has made this video and has been analyzed by our member Rachi. So shout out to Rachi for analyzing this video and telling us the outcome. And this is the summary. Basically, a Pokemon that's at 100% energy will earn 2.5 times the, uh, 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 the berries in speed than one that is at 0% energy. And the actual formula is calculated like this. So let's take out Charmander, for example. If Charmander had 100% energy, so this was 100%, then what will happen is its speed will be this, the frequency, divided by, divided by 2.5. So let's say at about 50 minutes, it would go down to about 20 minutes. In other words, this Charmander will farm a berry every 20 minutes. Of course, if the berry was a specialist berry type, then it would be two berries every 20 minutes. Now, I actually did this testing myself. I have an alt account where my Pikachu is just constantly at 0% and I've noticed that not only can it farm berries, it can also farm ingredients and it can also trigger main skill. Not very fast, but it can do all of that. And it happens about every 44 minutes, which is about right. Because if it's at 0%, what happens is if you use the formula, it will tell you the multiplier becomes 1 from energy. In other words, the frequency is multiplied by or divided by 1. Meaning that this Pikachu at 0% will farm me a berry or two berries because it's a specialist every 44 minutes. Now I found that personally from my my data collection, it wasn't exact. It was never exactly 44 minutes. Sometimes it's before that, sometimes it's after that. Sometimes there's a freak accident that gives a little bit more. I don't know, maybe there is some randomness in this, but ultimately it's pretty close to the formula that we've been given. And the formula is this, the speed multiplier so this here, the speed multiplier, and by the way, this is Google translated, so that's why it looks a bit weird. So uh, is one plus 1.5 times energy divided by 100. Energy being the percentage. The reason why you divide by 100 is because we need to convert that percentage to a decimal. So at 100% energy, so let's say this was 100, then it's times one. In other words, you get a total multiplier of one plus 1.5. In other words, 2.5 times the frequency rate. Hopefully that makes sense. If this energy was zero instead, then it would just be one, which makes sense because it's one times multiplier on the frequency. Now for, for the maths, I know for some people it's quite hard to understand. Uh, so don't worry about the maths. All you got to know is at 0%, the Pokemon will farm at about the frequency rate. So for this Charmander, about 15 minutes, it will collect one berry. At 100%, it will collect it every 20 minutes or so because it's 2.5 times faster. That's the main point you got to take away from this. If you are very interested, I want to show you. So this next part is not as important, but I want to show you what the theoretical limits a Pokemon 
could potentially farm strength at. And what I mean by that is, what if we had a really fast Pokemon that's twice as fast as a, a average Pokemon that's at level 60, which is the current cap, and it has Berry Finding S, which is a really nice gold skill, and it has Helping Speed Up Nature, and it has Helping Speed S um, sub-skill, and it has Helping Speed M as a sub-skill, and for some reason it can constantly farm at 100% energy, and it happens to be the favorite berry of the week, and it's a berry specialist. How much better would a Pokemon like that be compared to one that isn't all of that? And I've done the maths. And I was discussing this on my Discord channel with some members. And here is how we came down to the 200 times multiplier. I don't mean 200%, I mean 200 times. So as a percentage, it will be 20,000% bonus. So how do we come up with this? All right, so let's do the maths now and see how I came down to the 200 times multiplier in terms of how much strength a Pokemon can provide Snorlax. So first point to consider is frequency. Frequency is the base Pokemon, how fast it is. A Raichu, for example, can farm as fast as 30 minutes per ingredient, or oh, sorry, per berry, uh, compared to, let's say, a Diglett or Krogunk that is like 60 minutes for farming, a lot slower. So let's call it an approximate two times speed. So let's get a times two on that. That's point number one. If it's a berry specialist, it would be times two as well, but it'll be times three if we have berry finding S. So these next two points will become a times three. If it's a favorite berry, it will be times two. Favorite berry. Uh, if you're farming at max energy compared to 0% energy, you'll be times 2.5. And then I'm, I'm writing too much on the screen here, but you'll, you'll see that I keep going. If you've got a helping speed up nature compared to a neutral nature, I don't mean compared to a speed down nature. It will be even better if you're comparing to a speed down nature. It'll be about 10% boost. So let's say about times 1.1. 1 .1. Um, and then if you have helping speed S and helping speed M sub skills. So that means you have, let's hypothetically say you're level 50. You've unlocked helping speed skill, uh, helping speed S, M and berry finding these three. Um, then what I believe, so this is, this one, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I believe that sub skills are stacked by addition, not by multiplier. So these two will become a multiplier of 1.21. 1 um, and, uh, level 50, level 60 cap reach. Now this one's an interesting point. And once again, thanks to Cerebi, one of our main resources for this, uh, for this game. Each time you level up your Pokemon, that berry will get a plus one strength bonus to Snorlax. So at uh, at each level, you will see here that it just keeps going up as you level up. By about you, about about the time you reach level sixty, that berry strength is, is about four to five times that of level one. You should also know that each berry, to begin with, has a base berry strength that's slightly different with dragon berries being one of the rarest. Only Altaria can farm dragon berries at the moment, um, being uh, the Yachi berry, so that's the dragon berry, dragon type berry, being the one that has the highest strength per berry. But this is just a side note, I'm not considering this in the calculations. And I'm going to quote my own post here to show you the actual numbers. Ultimately, berry finding S times three, Fate are on a berry specialist times two if it's a favorite berry so that's times six double speed so if it's a Raichu versus a Diglett so you're you're, you're at 12 times multiplier a hundred percent energy so so compared to zero percent energy so you're at about 25 now uh nature sub skills and level 60 it all then multiplies to about 200 times the average strength provided by a Pokemon that is at, that is slow. Let's say it takes an hour to farm, not a berry specialist, is not a favorite berry. Um, it's at 0% energy, does not have any good skills and does not have a good nature and is level one. If we compare a God tier Pokemon to a trash tier Pokemon that hasn't been looked after at all, 
it's 200 times. So here it is, 200 times if you have everything set up perfectly. Now, of course, I don't expect anyone to have a Pokemon like that. Well, not, not a lot of us would, and you wouldn't have a whole team of it. I'm just theoretically calculating how much of a multiplier in terms of Snorlax strength uh, a Berry Specialist can provide. It doesn't mean that you can only play this game using that Pokemon, that theoretical Pokemon. Once again, thank you for watching, guys. If this video confused you, great. I did my job. Leave a like. Just watch it again. You'll, you'll understand it uh, after watching it a few times. If you've still got questions, you're not sure, come ask me in the comments section down below. And uh, you can also use my Discord. I do respond quicker on Discord. I do apologize for a previous video where I said that the berry strength that's fed to Snorlax, the strength that it receives from a berry is related to RP, but actually it's related to level. So RP, RP is related to level, but it is not, it, it is not used to calculate the strength that's fed to Snorlax. The level is. The higher the level though, the higher the RP, which is why I have, we, we initially had assumed that RP is related to the strength that Snorlax gets because it seemed to go in the same direction. Everything goes up at the same time. If if level goes up, RP goes up, but so do, and so does berry strength, but actually it's more related to the level as you saw from my chart earlier um, than it is related to the RP of the Pokemon. And please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.